Good evening. Yes, and by the time you get home, you have enough change to buy another gun. 
Yeah. Well, if 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 you traveled all over the world, you couldn't find the system better than that one. Oh, George! One time, this ferocious tiger started chasing Uncle Amazon round and round and round and round. Crazy, hold it, crazy. There are no tigers in South America. Oh, George! When a ferocious tiger's chasing you with the hot breath right down your neck. You don't have time to stop and say what are you doing in South America. Good night, folks. Thank you. Thank you for whoops, I'm sorry, I'm still in Georgia. Thank you very much. Good evening. Hi. Hi. Good evening. Okay, hi. Glad you enjoyed that. I mean, you have a right to expect us to be good. We're the act. Well, we have a right to expect you to be good. You're the audience. Act. Audience. Act. Audience. Join us, please. Ready? Come on. Act. Come on. Audience. Act. Come on. Audience. Very good. Very good, boys and girls. Now, we promise to be the best act we can possibly be, but you guys have to promise to be the best audience you can possibly be. So we want everyone to raise your right hand. Everyone, come on. Everybody. Come on, no deadbeats. Get the hand up, let's go. Raise your right hand. Yeah, good. And repeat the Ruth and Eddie audience pledge. Ready? I see more Linowitz. I see more Linowitz. It's amazing how many people there are named Seymour Linowitz. <laughs> promise to give Ruth and Eddie who are obviously destined to go on to bigger and better things. Who are obviously destined to go on to bigger and better things. My eternal loyalty and will name them in my will. I will not make a commotion or be a pain in the ass. And if I have to go to the bathroom, I will hold it in. We are the greatest audience in the world. Give yourselves a round of applause. Thank you. That's great. You guys are wonderful. Do you live in Sunrise Hill condominiums? Oh, it's our neighbor, honey. Is that so? <laughs> Isn't that nice? Everybody you, wave to our the neighbor. Sunrise Hill yeah, wave. Yeah, hi, neighbor. We should be out tearing down fences or something. <laughs> Well, this is, uh, we're really happy to be here in Stanford this evening. It's a real change for us. We usually work in the resorts of the Catskills and Pocono Mountains. And here's how you tell the difference. The Catskills are Jewish. Oy, the Poconos are Italian. Hey. Very simple. But look at all the young people we get in the audience tonight, honey. Yeah, this is refreshing. Not like the Catskills. Those people are old. Every time you put your water glass down, somebody puts their teeth in it. <laughs> you'd like to have over for dinner. That's right, one lucky couple will win the chance to have us over to their house for dinner. <laughs> Wouldn't you like to have us over for dinner? Aren't we the type? When? when? We'd rather eat with Italians if we possibly can though, because Italians take pictures of food. Did you ever see them sure. at a party? Did you ever see them? Ooh, Carmelo, take a picture of the cake. Ooh. We're a good dinner guests. We bring a picture of a bottle of wine. I'm Italian. Are there any Italians? Any Italians in the audience tonight? Where are Italians? Hey. Yay. Hey. I'm Italian. I'm an Italian American princess. That's a Jewish American princess who can cook. Fortunately, she's half Polish. By the time she gets to Bloomingdale, she forgot why she went. <laughs> <laughs> and what's this cooking stuff? You can't cook. I'm a great cook. Yeah, you're a great cook. We're being sued by Alpo for industrial espionage. <laughs> you think I'm kidding? At our house, we feed the dog the scraps before dinner. If he don't eat, we don't eat. Well, he ate what I made last night. So you think. When you weren't looking, he stuck his paw down his throat. <laughs> Uh, and you're not much of a housekeeper either. You're gonna start on the housework now? Why not? You won't. <gasps> you're unreasonable. I'm unreasonable. Last week she cleaned out her closet. We found Hoppa. Of course, being Italian, you're used to finding bodies in the closet. You're gonna start on my Italian family now? Oh, ladies and gentlemen, you don't know what it's like marrying into an Italian family when you're not Italian. 
Ruth has four brothers, all named Tony. <laughs> and Italian men have a very interesting sense of values. You know, while you're dating, it's like, hey, you lay one freaking hand on my sister. This is big brother Tony talking now. You lay one freaking hand on my sister, me, my brother Tony, my other brother Tony, and my little brother Anthony are gonna kick the shit out of you. Five seconds after you're married. Hey, she ain't pregnant yet, take her home. Bada bing, bada bing. Keep that up, there'll be no more bada bing or bada bang in your lifetime. And the brothers, that's, what really scares me is my father-in-law. What's the matter with my father? What's the matter with your father? He's in the mob. My father is not in the mob. No, he's not in the mob. He knew I couldn't afford to get Ruth the wedding ring, so he got me one. Right. I still had a finger in it. <laughs> well, your family's no prize, you know. All they do is drink. At our wedding, they insisted on an open bar. Well, why? A lot of weddings have open bars. At the church? <laughs> we had a candlelight ceremony. We put a match to his father's breath. My father could drink. When he died, we cremated him. It took three weeks to put out the flames. And what about your brother? What about him? What about him? He never worked a day in his life. He's the no. laziest man on two feet. No, we knew he'd never amount to anything. The day he was born, the doctor cut the umbilical cord. He claimed injury. We're not on disability. <laughs> All right. The married people here are all looking, yeah, they all fight the same as we do. You see, we fight just like everyone else. It makes no difference whether you're in show business, whether you're not. We fight like everyone else, but we stuck it out, and last, just a few months ago, we celebrated our 20th wedding anniversary. How about that? We married very young. I was five, she was six. Rode and horses, made and sticks. We didn't take any chances, though. We knew it would work out. Ruth checked her horoscope the wedding day and said that we were cosmically connected. That's right. My moon is resting on his Venus. <laughs> you folks can read into that anything you'd like. Listen, it's, it's tough staying together nowadays. I mean, look, look, right? I mean, half of all marriages end in divorce. That's right. That's 50%. 50%. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to look at the couple sitting next to you. If they're not divorced, you're next. It's the men's fault, though. That's why these marriages are not working out. Right, girls? It's all the men's fault, right? That's how you stay married for 20 years, right? You just automatically know that it's your fault. Rajiv Gandhi is assassinated. It's my fault. Makes no difference. It's my fault. And it is our fault because we expect a lot from our women today. We Too want much everything. Woman, that's we want right. everything. We want Superwoman. Superwoman! She's chairman of the board of a Fortune 500 corporation. Brilliant interior decorator. Master chef. Look up in the sky. It's Supermom! Supermom! She jogs, lifts weights, teaches yoga, has authority yet knows when to be feminine, just got her doctorate and is continuing her education. And who, disguised as a mild-mannered suburban housewife from a greater metropolitan area, is great in bed, drives a Corvette with manual transmission, fights against snow wax buildup, has no discernible body odor, remembers my mother. Butchers her own meat, break dances, looks young, keeps the checkbook, handles our investments, wrote two novels on our personal computer, flosses her teeth twice a day, fights for truth, justice, and the American way, and still has time to make homemade head cheese. My wife, I think I'll keep her. She's the woman of the 90s. Oh, God. That takes more and more out of me every time. What are you doing? I'm pulling out my pantyhose. No, that. I mean, why? They're falling down. I have to pull them up. Well, why don't you get the right size? These are one size fits all. I don't know who this all is, but she ain't my size, all right? Right, girls? You know what I'm talking about? Yes. One size fits all. Come on, a pantyhose that bad. How would you like to walk around with your crotch around your knees? <laughs> I could, I'd be real popular. You know what I mean. You pull them up, they slide down. You pull them up, they slide down. One time I made a mistake, I bought jumbo fishnet. Had to tie them over my head in a knot, look like a sack of oranges. Your problem is that you don't keep up with the latest in pantyhose technology. Pantyhose technology? That's right. There is a new fabric. It's airtight, and it won't run. Airtight pantyhose? That's right. 
one baked bean dinner, and you're afloat in the Macy's Day Parade. <laughs> Take four guys with ropes to hold you down. I love that ritual women have in the morning, getting into those things, you know? And they got all of these different moves, and they got the side motions, you know? Sexy stuff. Do I look fat? Are you going to start that again? I'm not starting anything. I asked you to show that stuff. I mean, do I look, do I no, look fat? No, no. And just so we can save time, your hair looks great, your outfit's perfect, and you are definitely the most gorgeous woman in the whole room. You've been checking out every woman in this room, haven't you? I didn't say Just that. in case you might be missing something. That's not Admit what I Admit it, I look fat. No. Chubby. No. Fat. I won't Porky. No. Come on. I mean, I, do I look skinny? I refuse to answer. All right, do I look skinny? No. Okay. Ha-ha. You admit I'm fat. Wait a minute. I didn't say that. I didn't you say You said that. I'm fat. I did not say that. Well, you that. said I'm not skinny. That's, well, you're so not that skinny. So that means I'm fat. No, you're not well, fat. Well, then what am I? You're regular. How dare you call me regular? You see, I can't win. And you can win. And you can win. And no man can win when a woman starts asking trick questions. Trick questions? That's right, trick questions. Like what? Like what? How about this one? If your mother and me were both drowning and you could only save one, which one would you save? Well, <laughs> neither. And I never learned my lesson. I got caught. I've been married all these years and I got caught. A couple of weeks ago, we're sitting on the couch, we're watching television, and this movie with Victoria Principal, and Ruth leans over and says, isn't she pretty? And like a moron, I said, yes. The next week, I'm outside washing my car. I said, Ruth, would you bring me a beer? She said, let Victoria Principal bring you the beer. All right, I think we're getting into a little difficult territory. Yeah. Let's change the subject. How about some quick impressions? Quick uh, impressions? Quick, all right, impressions. quick impressions. All right. Here's, uh, here's America's favorite entrepreneur. You know, the guy that liked the Remington Electric Shaver so much, he bought the candy knee. Here's Victor Kayam and his wife committing suicide. I like this crowd. This is a sick crowd. I like these people. How about Steve Lawrence and Edie Gourmet in divorce court? I'll take the house. I'll take the car. We'll take the kids. And split them, split them, split them down the middle. Do, 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 do. All right, here's a really quick impression. Here's the guy from the Federal Express commercial and his wife having an argument. If you think I'm taking you out for delicious dining downtown, darling, you can forget about it because I'm terribly tired and totally tuckered out from drumming up drivers with deliveries and dispatches for damn demanding dynamos. The powerful pressure probably pretends I've got to be perfectly cool. Easy for you to say you're not the only one who works up by talking on the telephone to Tars and Turds from Toronto, Toledo, and Timbuktu town and terrible telemarketing products. Tell me about it. I've got a crazy cockamamie commute commence to get the crack of dawn. That's the problem. By the time you get home, the crazy cockamamie commute commence to get the crack of dawn, sending pushy people practicing packages. You can't cut the mustard. Can't cut the mustard. Listen, I'm the fastest man you ever met. I'm the fastest man you ever knew. I'm the fastest man in the shipping business. That's the problem. What's the problem? Some things can't be rushed. Slut. Win. Slut. Win. Slut. Win. Slut. Win. Ah, we, we can't, can't talk. talk. <laughs> oh, God. Well, I'll tell you, we've talked about Ruth's cooking. We've talked about her uh, lack of domestic skills in the house cleaning area. What we haven't talked about is her driving. Whoa! I am a great driver. Yeah, you're a great driver. Ted Kennedy wouldn't drive with you. You think I'm kidding? I'm Let, a great driver. You're a great driver? Last week she took our car up and got caused a 12-car pileup. She put on a directional to make a left-hand turn. <laughs> 11 people believed her. <laughs> so we wound up having to get another car. We decided, well... You know, we wanted to get American, but we weren't sure whether the quality was there, and they were about the same price, so we got a Japanese car, we bought a Mazda. Kamikaze car, hi! And the salesman who sell those cars are just as phony as the American ones. The guy told me it seats five. It seats five anorexic midgets is what it seats. And he talked me into all these options. I even got an electric sunroof so Ruth could sit up. And a car.
car seat so you can drive. <laughs> well, it's easy. today's cars are very complex, right? They're no, remember they were simple, you used to just start the key and drive no more, they've got buzzers, alarms, and the real expensive cars even talk to you. Well, congratulations, Mr. Collins, you pencil neck geek. Here are the keys to your brand new beautiful Porsche 944. Enjoy it. Oh boy, who says accountants don't have fun, huh? Hi, I'm your Porsche 944. My name is Ushi. I'm a sleek, high-powered, fast-track experience. I can take four in the back with no trouble at all. Enter me in your new man. Don't forget to buckle up. Woo, a brave one. Are you ready to turn me on? Go ahead. Put your little key in my ignition. Now. Push my accelerator. Harder. Harder. Oh, I love it, I love it, I love it. Now, push my stick. You animal, you. Take me into first. I want second baby, second baby, second baby. Oh, I want third. Oh, I want third. Oh, I want third. Fourth baby, fourth. Fourth baby, fourth. Don't stop. Don't stop. Overdrive. Overdrive. <laughs> Got a cigarette? The Porsche 944. I'm waiting for you if you're man enough. Taking orders for one of those. Oh. Well, the guy has got his Porsche now. What is he going to do? Well, I, I guess the first thing a guy does is he goes out and looks for look, cruising for chicks, right? Right, right. Makes no difference. And what's the first place a guy? The first place a guy goes is looking for women is where? A disco. Sure. Great place to pick up girls. Conditions are just right. It's dark and you're drunk. And a disco is an amazing place. It's a great place to go and watch people because. A woman will let you do things to her on the dance floor. She never let you do anywhere else.
I am getting too old for this shit. You people want us to work hard, yeah. Yeah, they do. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm glad you're enjoying yourself. Because I'm having a stroke. No, because... <laughs> because... Why, for heaven's sake? Well, I'm trying to get there. Yeah. Because there's enough sadness in the world today. Certainly enough noise, like back there. All kinds of that. But there's a lot of sadness in the world today. And on the way here, I heard a really depressing piece of news. And I didn't want to mention it, because I didn't want to ruin your good time. But apparently we've lost another show business great. Poppin' Fresh, the Pillsbury Doughboy, has just died of a yeast infection. <laughs> that is sad, isn't it? Easy for you to laugh. You don't have to go home with this man, lady. What's the matter? What's the matter? I don't know. You think I'm using too much mousse in my hair? <laughs> Does your husband tell you idiotic jokes like that, miss? No? Which one? What's so funny? What's always funny? That's your husband? Uh-oh, I made a boo-boo. You're a lesbian, I'm sorry. Well, this is Tuesday, this is Wednesday night. Tuesday night, night. is half off, is yes. half off. right, yeah. No, which one is your husband? This man here. Your hair husband? Who's dating diagonally? What's going on in this thing? What's that? You're going to be married soon? When are you going to be married? Really? Let's interview the couple to be. Going to be married. How did you meet? How'd you meet? Tell. At school? At a disco. At a disco. You turned her upside down and then the rest was, uh, and it was, uh, lust at first sight, wasn't it? What's your names? Jacqueline. Jacqueline and? And? Oh boy, Vassos. Vassos! What kind of name is that, Greek? Yes. Great! Does Vassos mean anything, or, or is it just a name? Okay. Vassos, what is Jacqueline's most annoying habit? Oh boy. Most annoying habit? And I'm sorry, Vassos. Just the one? You just missed the, the question, you lose the trip to Mallorca. Oh, come on, what's her most annoying habit? Come on, you're gonna be married now. You made it over. I think taking over the bed at night. <laughs> Kicking me out of the bed every night. Kicking you out of the bed at night. Squeezing me at Your fiance. You're saying this in front of probably her mother and all the gang. That's what Vasos in Greek it means crowded. That's what it means. <laughs> uh, what is Vasos most annoying habit, Jacqueline? <laughs> yes, he has a big mouth. He certainly does. When are you going to get married? Next summer. Next summer. That's wonderful. So we don't know how you met. We don't know what he tells lies. And you have the most boring life of any couple I have ever interviewed yet. Where are the other married people in the audience? Where are the other married people? Who else is married? You're married? You're married? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I haven't given up on these two. I think no? they have potential. Okay. I think they have potential. All right. Who proposed to who? I did. You proposed to her? And... Just a couple of weeks. Oh, tell us how did it happen? Kind of he was he was laying on the floor after she pushed him out of the bed. Yes. Lake George. Lake George. Yeah. Okay. I said, how did it happen? He said, Lake George. All right. Now I'm going to say where, and he's going to say in the movies. No. But what's your side of it? Did It was in Lake George. Well, that, that kind of clarifies everything, doesn't it? It really sums everything right up there. Well, you guys have a very boring, 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 boring existence. Personally, but we're very happy that you're going to get married. Personally, I think this whole crowd is boring. Sir, you're on my wire. Would you get up for a second, please? Thank you. How did you do now, that? Now, Vasos and Jacqueline, you know, we asked you how you met, and you're probably now wondering how we met, right? Not a yeah, place. we figured. Everybody wants to yeah, know how we met. Yeah. It's a long story. In 1968, I went to high school. I went to college. I got a job after school, school at a newspaper. I was supposed to be learning a trade, but mostly I was sent out for coffee. Around that time, this new girl came to work in the group room, and I thought she was stunning. 
Thank you. You're welcome. I didn't think I had a shot with Ruth, and all the guys oh, made fun of her because she had big breasts. Smile. One day I was going around taking the coffee order, and this little lady, Amy, said to me, I know someone who likes you. I said, Betty who? She said, it's someone in the group room. So the next day I spent 20 bucks on a cab so that we could get to work early so we could walk to the bank and cash our paychecks together. So we walked to the bank, and then we walked around for a while. And I don't remember what I said because I was numb. We wound up at a bus stop where I had to catch a bus. And I took her hands into mine, and I kissed her. And from that moment on, I just knew I was going to marry her. Vasos. Well, Vasos and Jacqueline, we know that someday you're going to be able to tell a story like this. See, we interview a couple at every show because Ed and I are writing a book about our life and our career. About our career will be a pamphlet. Anyway, at every show we interview another couple, and hopefully all the answers from our interviews will wind up in our book. So we're really thank. Let's thank Faso and Jacqueline for answering questions for us tonight. We really appreciate it. We have two or three more questions, and that'll be the end of it. Do you mind two or three more questions? Let's hear it from Faso and Jacqueline, who don't mind answering two or three more questions up on our stage tonight. Let's hear it from Faso and Jacqueline. Here they come now, ladies and gentlemen. Let's hear it from Faso and Jacqueline. Here they are, ladies and gentlemen, the bride and groom to be. Here they come. Let, let's make some real noise for Bossos and Jacqueline. It's our last bit, ladies and gentlemen. We get off the stage after this. Calm down. Here they come, Bossos and Jacqueline. Beautiful as the day that she'll be married. A scant few months from now, you face the audience in a show. That's it. Face the audience. Yes, get the picture nice. Jacqueline, what are we doing? What are we playing here? Yes. Thank you very much. Vasos and Jacqueline, we're a little nervous coming up here. Jacqueline, move a little over to the left. Yes. But we want to assure Jacqueline that we would never embarrass or humiliate you. She's a teacher, so we would never embarrass or humiliate her in any way, shape, or form whatsoever. Well, Vasos and Jackie, it's time to play Marriage Jeopardy! Yes, it's Marriage Jeopardy, the trivia show that pits the husband against the wife and tries to put your marriage in jeopardy. <laughs> My lovely assistant, Vanna Banana. Good answer! Come on! Good answer! Thank you, Vanna. We'll stand between you with our wedding bell. If you think you know the answer to the multiple choice question, ring that bell. First person to get answer the question correctly and get it gets five points. But get it wrong! Get it wrong, and your spouse gets to punish you with our Make My Day Water Gun! Yes! It's a lot of fun! That you can't wait, question number one. Vasos and Jackie, you are at a party, and Vasos is having a great time with another woman. They're dancing, laughing, flirting, and whispering in each other's ear. Do you A, smile to yourself and say, what a lucky person I am to have such a popular husband. <laughs> B, invite that other woman over for dinner real soon. Or C, accidentally pour lighter fluid on them yelling, burn, baby, burn, as they go to their fiery deaths. You got it! Burn, baby, burn. You're absolutely right, okay, it's good. Okay. <laughs> well, Vasos. Vasos, you keep answering questions like that, and we've got a spot for you on the nighttime show. Marital moron. Okay. All right, here's question number two, so pay close attention. Are you paying close attention? Huh? Okay. Vasos and Jackie, you are at the boss's house trying to make that big impression. Vasos is smiling at his boss, and you notice he has a big piece of spinach caught between his teeth. Do you A, hum the tune of Popeye the Sailor Man and hope he takes the hint? <laughs> B, shove a hard-boiled egg in his mouth and make a spinach salad? Or C, say nothing and let Vasos make an ass of himself? <laughs> say nothing. You're right again, how about that? Yes! Well, yes! Well, well, Vasos, this is our third and final question and your chance to get even, so pay close attention. 
Vasos, you are having a sexual encounter with Jackie. You look up and you notice she's balancing her checkbook. Do you A, kiss her assets? B, bounce her checks? Or C, ignore the situation and just get yours? You're absolutely wrong. I'm terribly sorry. Well, this is the part of the show where we sum up the points, but I haven't been paying attention to the points. Have you, Vanna? No! Good, then Vasos, you lose. But not to worry, Marriage Jeopardy will not let you walk away empty-handed. To keep you warm at night, your very own life-size Vanna Banana Party Dog! Yes, Vasos, now you can take Vanna to Lake George and show her you... No, we don't like it. Let's hear it for our better half, Jacqueline, ladies and gentlemen. Jacqueline, Marriage Jeopardy has some wonderful parting gifts for you. For instance, a $25 gift certificate to Bloomingdale's. How about that? Uh, yes, Jackie, for $25, a sales clerk at Bloomingdale's will come to the door and say, Hello, that'll be $25. And a case of General Foods International Coffees. How about that, huh? Because you're lucky I love mocha cappuccino. Yes, Jackie, now you and Vasos can sip coffee, sit out on your porch, and think of how pathetic your life really is. <laughs> and a dream vacation. How about that, huh? Yes, it's a dream vacation. Yes, we'll be there. We'll be there. to Wildwood, New Jersey, where 2,500 condominium salesmen will take you to their hotel room and demonstrate the true meaning of time-sharing. How about that, huh? Well, Jackie, you've made a complete fool of yourself. Get the hell off the stage, and thanks for playing Marriage Jeopardy. Good night, everyone. Another round of applause, please. Thank you. We're going to take a brief intermission while we set up for Broadway Down. Uh, thank you all for coming. I hope everyone's having a great time. We'll be back in about 10 minutes. <laughs>
Please help me in welcoming Miss Erin McCormick. Stars in her eyes. We are dancing. 
because I think you're going to be hearing them an awful lot. My next young lady is a secretary for McKinsey and Company during the daytime hours. But from what I understand, she's become a star in her own right at karaoke bars. And it was her friends who convinced her to come here tonight. Would you please help me in welcoming Miss Dana Vigilante?
like the answer. What the reason? My heart beats. That's a new GNU. Boo, boo, be doo. Where is Becky now? Ha! She ran off with some playboy on a boat down for warmer climes. And she left me here doing the crossword puzzle in the Sunday. All the times we had fun here. Way more often than not. She'd say, hun, what's a pustule? And I'd say, it's a blot. She'd say, Afghani nomad. And I'd say, it's a curd. I let her hold the pencil. She could write in the word. And when she was having trouble spelling Trist, T-R-Y-S-T, I showed her, oh, how I showed her. 23 across, lover, archaic, amorous, A-M-O-R-I-S-T -E blank. I am sitting here doing the Sunday Times crossword puzzle. Somehow the words won't come. Can you figure it me with my splendid vocabulary? Maybe I should play dumb. What the four-letter word meaning? Why should it happen to us? There was never a moment's doubt. All at once, Becky's jumping and screaming and yelling. I tell you, the four-letter word that came out? Prefix. That means pro. P-R-O. Odeo dose. Aren't you feeling as if having brains or intelligence was one of the world's worst crimes? And the sentence is doing the crossword puzzle in the Sunday. All the time, Becky, tell me. You shut up, this I'll get. Seven blanks, meaning air hole. It's fistula alphabet. I'd say no, she'd say don't tell me. It's tubulus, tubulac. I'd say Becky, it's chimney. Becky'd sit down and cry. Perhaps that's why I'm left here on the show. Perhaps she wanted to get the long ones by herself. 38 across, carries a torch. Statue of Liberty. S-T-A-T-U-E-O-F-L-I-B-E-R-T-Y-Y-Y-Y-Y-Y-Y-Y. -Y 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 Am I sitting here doing the Sunday Times crossword and I know why the words won't come. Cause my Becky smiles off on a boat to Bermuda with an ignorant lousy bum. With a four letter word meaning five made a kappa. That's me. As bright as a guy could be. So bright someone else who could not tell a fig from a frigate is off with my Becky head. Bird. That's an awk. A-U-K. <laughs> if I weren't so dumb, I'd be spending this Sunday in a church hearing wedding chimes. And I'd never remember
any note you can reach, I can go higher. I can sing any note higher than you. No, you can't. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can. No, you can't. I can say softer. I can say anything softer than you. No, you can't. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. I can drink my liquor faster than a flicker. I can drink it quicker. I can eat it quicker. I can't open any safe. Without being caught. Sure. That's what I thought, you crook. Any note you can hold, I can hold longer. I can hold any note longer than you. No, you can't. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can.
a, um, a lady running around here, sometimes she's on her knees in front of here with a camera. I just like her to pop her head out and say hello to everybody. My partner, Lori Gazda. You've already heard this young lady sing in a duet. Now I'd like you to, to meet her. She's a 17-year-old, very new 17-year-old student at Ripuam who both Lori and I boast her acceptance into a very intensive camp this summer in the performing arts at Joe Rosemary. And she boasts the fact that she's one of the newest drivers on the road. Would you please welcome Miss Kara Brown. Broadway bound. She works at Caldwell Banker and I hope her boss isn't in the audience tonight because I understand she's going to be hitting the great white way pretty soon and go for a professional acting career. Would you please help me in welcoming Miss Susan Donovan. Thank you. 
Okay, now let's see the man side of this. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jeff Pliskin, Mr. Tony Republicano, and Mr. Andre Fontenelle. Everybody ought to have a maid. Everybody ought to have a working girl. Everybody ought to have a lurking girl to put around the house. Everybody ought to have a maid. Everybody ought to have a menial. Consistently congenial and quieter than a mouse. She'd be delicious, tidying up the dishes, neat as a pin. Oh, oh, wouldn't she be delightful, sweeping up, sleeping in? Everybody ought to have a maid. Someone whom you hire when you're short of help to offer you sort of help you never get from a spouse. Fluttering up the stairway, shuttering up the windows, cluttering up the bedroom, buttering up the master, puttering all around. Everybody ought to have a maid. Everybody ought to have a waking girl. Everybody ought to have a liking girl to put her around the house. Everybody ought to have a maid. Everybody ought to have a serving girl, a loyal and unswerving girl who's quieter than a mouse. Oh, oh, picture at the dustbin, especially when she's just been traipsing about. Oh, oh, wouldn't she be delightful living in, camping out? Everybody ought to have a maid. Someone who, when fetching you your slipper, will be winsome as a whipper will and graceful as a grouse. Skittering down the hallway, tittering in the parlor, flittering in the pantry, littering up the bedroom, puttering all around the house. Everybody ought to have a maid. Everybody ought to have a working girl. Everybody ought to have a lurking girl to put her around the house. Everybody ought to have a maid. Someone who's efficient and reliable, obedient and pliable, and quieter than a mouse. Oh, oh, wouldn't she be so nimble, fiddling with the thimble, mending a gown? Oh, oh, wouldn't she be so delightful, leading up, bending down? Everybody ought to have a maid. Someone who'll be busy as a bumblebee, and even if you grumblebee, as graceful as a grouse. Pattering in the attic, clattering in the cellar, clattering in the kitchen, fluttering in the bedroom, fluttering all around the house.
Let's like some matches, get back here.